Hello chess friends and welcome to the of chess channel and welcome back to our Queen's Game Decline series. So in this series we're following this very nice opening from White's and from Black's perspective and today we continue with our Queen's Game Decline series with a new variation that we haven't covered so far in our series. Today we're starting to analyze the so-called Vienna variation. The Vienna variation is really such a beautiful opening. Uh, it's playable for White, it's playable for Black. It's such a double-edged opening. I think it has so many aggressive attacking ideas for both sides. It has also some beautiful strategical elements and in this video in our first video of the vienna variation i'm going to show you uh, beautiful beautiful traps that can happen uh in the vienna variation for white and for black and i will show you also the most common aggressive methods how to play this opening i think uh, this will be a very important video for you to recognize how beautiful really this opening can be because if you have don't have maybe a good opening against d4 i think the vienna variation is perfectly fine so let's check out now what is the vienna variation of the queen's game declined and let's see now the most beautiful and dirtiest uh, traps of this very very sharp opening so here d4 d5 of course we have c4 the queen's gambit after move e6 we have the queen's gambit declined and after move knight to c3 knight to f6 which would be the most often and most popular way to proceed here for black we have now the so-called knight uh, to f3 move which would be of course the three knights variation and now comes the actual vienna variation move which would be the move d takes c4 and in the beginning uh it is a strange idea maybe for you to uh, play this game uh, if you maybe not familiar with the queen's game with accepted lines uh, then you don't want to play that but actually uh, the main goal of blacks here is to wait now for white to make the next move with the e pawn so if white plays now a slightly passive method with the move e3 then probably a6 will happen and then of course after something like a4 uh, black has provoked a huge weakness on b4 a square weakness on b4 although this pawn is really hard to protect it's not the point that black will hang on to this pawn on c4 the main most important idea here is just simply to provoke a weakness on b4 if you don't react like this if you play something like bishop to c4 immediately then of course you get get kicked away with a new tempo then bishop to d3 bishop to e2 and now with the move c5 i think uh, black would reach a very pleasant position of uh, the queen's gambit accepted lines uh with the move knight to c3 already there where the knight can be also kicked away with the move b4 so you see when the bishop was on c4 uh, and the knight on c3 black is using many times this method to gain some spaces against your minor pieces just by pushing some bones so that's why um, you have to be careful sometimes when you're playing the game uh, with the white so it's, uh, if you play e3 it is slightly passive if you play e4 then it's sometimes too aggressive because your opponent is playing now the move bishop to b4 and you see you could lose uh, the tactical battles around the square e4 so that's exactly the line the first line that i wanted to show you and i wanted to show really some beautiful and dirty traps uh in this opening because um what i like to play now and we will cover also this line uh in the continuation of our series i like to play this gambit line now these days i played something else uh before but now after move bishop to c4 the main line would be knight to e4 then we castle and then we allow your po our opponent basically to play but bit uh, knight takes c3 b takes c3 and actually bishop to c3 would be a mistake uh it's i think really also a beautiful beautiful tactical line we will cover this line also but many times uh, black is simply retreating to e7 and then white has a beautiful position white has a great setup rook to e1 for the compensation of a pawn so but after move bishop to b4 recently i played the move bishop to g5 and i wanted to show really a beautiful trap that i used uh against also great youtuber against jonathan schranz uh, he has also a great channel and he played basically the most important tactical ideas from black's perspective really in a good way but then he made a huge huge blunder and from bishop to g5 there is now uh of course this method to play the move c5 which is really great it's actually one of the best ways here to proceed and i played simply bishop to c4 i played the normal uh move took the pawn finally on c4 after c takes d4 of course what you don't want to play is queen to d4 trading off queens and then of course uh black is getting all of the pins so that's now uh the main strategical goal here of black so that's why i played knight to d4 but now he played the beautiful move bishop to c3 still this is really really main theory of 
uh the vienna variation of the queen's gambling line i played bta c3 queen to a5 which is now really a beautiful double attack against this weak bishop on g5 and also against this weak pawn on c3 so that's why most of the times you can play bishop to b5 or knight to b5 i played here knight to b5 which cuts off of course the connection between the queen and the bishop but also it protects the c3 square and also it threatens the move knight to d6 and now comes the actual trappy part uh black can play now several mistakes black can play the mistake kingside castle we will cover uh this mistake um which would be really really a bad game then bishop to f6 going to have or black can delay casting what black needs really to do now the only way to proceed in this game in a good way is to play knight to e4 and actually after move knight to e4 the game becomes really really well because now the only good move for white is here to play queen to d4 double attack against the knight and uh, also against his pawn on uh, g7 and now there is there are basically only two good moves you can choose your way how to play it you can play now the move a6 or you can play kingside casting but actually let's talk to one plan uh in my opinion really one of the best ways is here simply to castle and that's exactly what black should do here kingside casting allow uh white now to take uh, the uh, the knight on e4 and now uh, after move a6 the knight has to retreat if you retreat with the knight then you lose the pawn on c3 and uh probably the rook on c uh, on a1 so that's why you have to play kingside casting secure uh and the king and now after b takes um uh, a takes b5 uh of course you see you have to play something like bishop to d3 the game should probably lead like this uh, f5 and there is a beautiful draw which came between vician and then magnus carlson in which both players after a couple more moves agree to agree to draw so this is must no the uh, theory after move uh queen to d4 uh jonathan played a different move order it's not a problem a6 then he'll castle afterwards but after move uh rook to d1 that i've prepared here i prepared of course uh immediately uh here a checkmate threat on d8 he played now the move knight to g5 which is perfectly fine i took the pawn but now he played the rook to f8 and actually the only good move here is to play a takes b5 again actually allow again uh here um me to take you have to take a rook take uh, queen takes rook on h8 now after king to e7 you see uh the queen is of course uh, very very uh, aggressive here but also the c3 is weak you see the bishop is hanging uh white uh get challenged here probably around the square so it's a playable position uh here for black that's must know theory of uh, this vienna variation unfortunately for my opponent he played after move um, king uh, queen takes g7 rook to f8 he tried to hang on to this rook but actually you have to give up the rook and now with the move knight to d6 the game was over he didn't castle and now with the move knight to uh, b7 we have a discovered attack the queen is lost and in this position he resigned so as i said it's uh, really really brutal you see how dirty these tactics are you have to give up the rook you have to give up the knight you have to give up the pawn i don't know you have to castle you don't castle yeah i'm not sure so uh that's the beauty of the vienna variation i think um it's so sharp and you've seen a couple more examples here we have for instance anatoly karpov against jan timan we had now the same position vienna variation d takes c4 now again e4 was played bishop to b4 bishop to g5 uh here also uh the same ideas we have now c5 still you see this is played in top top grandmaster level bishop to c4 c takes d4 knight to d4 still the same line queen to a5 knight to b5 and here uh timan didn't play also this move knight to e4 uh knight to e4 followed with kingside castling he played now bishop to d7 but it gets risky because you get knight to d6 uh here and after queen to d2 protecting the c3 here timan tried to counterattack against the weak e4 pawn but now here this position after move f4 actually Jan Timan resigned e5 is now huge huge threat so it's simply a position to resign so as I said really really while things can already happen let's see now a different example again this idea d takes c4 it was a little bit different mover but now e4 it's a game played by Etienne Bacro against uh, Jordi ba Magen Badal uh, here after move bishop to b4 bishop to g5 again we have the same approach c5 breaking in the center because what many times black doesn't want to tolerate is of course this very powerful center that white has here with his two pawns after move c5 uh here bishop to c4 uh 
of course taking again c takes d4 knight to d4 and here after bishop to c3 again the same position knight to b5 and now after kingside casting early kingside casting you see black is getting in many many positional problems so see now again i'm repeating this is must known theory knight to e4 uh, then of course after queen to d4 now you castle allow your opponent to take uh, take the um, knight and then you play a6 so this is the only way if you here in this position uh, black try to castle too early that's also a problem here you see now after bishop to f6 g takes f6 okay uh, it's not a position i think uh, that seems that it's losing immediately here for uh, for black but we can agree this weaknesses in the position h6 uh, g7 weakness also the queen will come into the game the queen is a little bit out of game here it doesn't cover uh the fifth rank in the near future we can expect a rook lift rook to d1 maybe a rook from i don't know rook to e1 or then rook to g3 so one of these rooks can be included into the game the problem uh always in this position for black is here that black is lacking development especially when it comes to this bishop which is blocked out by its own pawn strike Structure. so you see now uh, the bishop is paralyzed a little bit cannot come into the game meanwhile uh, white pieces are active white knight can also come on d6 can be improved maybe here even to d3 then something like e5 could happen maybe target to the h7 so of course there are many many opportunities uh, but i think you can get the grip you understand that actually black is in serious serious positional problems so after move g takes f6 we have queen to g4 now rook to d1 you see knight to d7 queen to h4 uh, still not allowing this knight to move if this knight moves maybe on e5 then it could be centralized here with this move um, white didn't allow this scenario we had queen to d8 knight to d6 you see how uh this squares are very very easy to find here for uh for white and here again this idea f4 we had rook to g8 and now king's at casting knight to b6 and now a beautiful move here by etienne bacro rook to f3 so as i said the rook clip is here a common idea what black tried knight to c4 but now after rook to uh, h3 you have to protect with uh rook to g7 and now a beautiful beautiful move here by etienne bacro e5 which is paralyzing basically the whole position f takes e5 it's not possible uh here because you lose the queen uh if you uh if you allow uh e takes f6 here by by white then of course you lose the rook and uh, probably the game around the square h7 here in the continuous we have knight to d6 but now uh, after e takes f6 in this position black versus knight so this was i think a beautiful miniature which shows uh, this may be not a trap, but uh, this is a miniature that shows, I think, um, the beauty of uh, early kingside casting by black, uh, weakening the pawn structure uh, was crucial here. After bishop to f6, g takes f6, uh, black had many, many position problems. And here, a top grand master like Bakron again uh, punished that immediately, uh, activated the pieces, not allow never allowed this bishop to get into the game. You see, then also the rook is not playing. So it was a beautiful, beautiful attacking game. So let's see now, even a more brutal, uh, brutal example of uh, the Vienna variation of the Queen's Gambit client. We have now the move E4 again, the same, same ideas, and you can get challenged with the move H6. And actually, what you should do here, and and it is a, a little bit unpleasant in the beginning i have to say it but you have to do it is to simply take out the knight and actually have to move queen to f6 bishop to c4 uh, again black is playing some ideas of uh, not casting immediately we have here now the move c5 again e5 getting some spaces is i think perfectly fine here after move queen to d8 now king side casting and here after c takes d4 knight to d4 again we don't want to trade off pieces probably king side casting is perfectly fine bishop to c3 maybe an opportunity uh, here to weaken the pawn structure at least somehow but here um, um, in one game bishop to c5 was played and now comes really uh, one one great element that you have to recognize which is now the king in the center position so we're not allowing now this king to escape here and this miniature or maybe even this tactical trap of uh, the queen's game the client of of uh, the vienna variation shows i think the power of this opening because now in one game it was the game played by uh, goran arcevich against nikolai nino Goran, um, the arts which played here now, beautiful bishop to b5 move. And this move is paralyzing now the whole, whole position. Because whatever black does here, 
it's a lost game uh, if you play something like here knight to d7 or bishop to d7 the problem is not this tactical stunner knight to e4 with ideas if you for instance try bishop to d4 we play first bishop to d7 then of course knight to d6 first the king cannot cast anymore and we can take out the bishop so this would be one of the ways but there is even a more brutal way uh, to play the game you can actually go if some if you're maybe a sick and pervert player then you can also play knight to e6 knight to e6 is also possible it's really wild what's going on now on the board because um, um uh, so, sorry after bishop to b5 yeah bishop to d7 you could go here knight to e6 after f takes e6 then queen to h5 would be very very annoying i think here to handle black needs now to make a decision black needs to play something like bishop to uh king to d the uh, e7 securing the king and now uh with the move queen to g4 you see again really, really serious serious problems here queen to g7 is going to happen rook to d1 uh getting use of the default so from this point on i think it's a one-way ticket although uh here black is up a whole piece but as i said these are the beauty be beautiful things that can happen so as i said even a knight to e6 move is working here although probably knight to e4 with knight to d6 ideas perfectly fine nothing lost uh, if you're maybe a more solid player but i would love to see maybe one game with this tactical idea knight to e6 in this game uh here after move bishop to b5 king to e7 was played here black realized that something could be wrong here in the position he tried to secure the king but actually now uh, queen to g4 is actually working look at this trap look at this tactical idea because queen to g4 is actually working whatever is your queen to d4 you'll give up the knight it's not the problem but now queen to g7 the problem is now the rook doesn't have good scores wherever the rook go, uh, goes maybe rook to f8 you see with queen to f6 you get checkmated because the bishop is covering this diagonal against the king so you could try maybe rook to d8 but again queen to f6 king to f8 and now with rook to d1 you see everything is very well protected here and the rook is on the default so they will lose the rook so this is really brutal as i said it seems in the beginning sometimes that black is defending this black can black can make something out of this okay even with the king on e7 okay maybe can he can hold the position still he has the bishop here he still has the activity but you see especially in these types of um, balanced positions the, the activity of the pieces is the major thing uh, here white has uh, really all of the pieces on good aggressive scores uh, the queen is very active so it's really a beautiful beautiful idea so let's go back as i said after move bishop to d7 uh, here um, knight, to, uh, knight to e6 sorry bishop to b5 first uh, bishop to c5 bishop to b5 uh, bishop to d7 and now knight to, uh, knight to e6 is uh, i think uh, something really really worth the study it's i think such a such a beautiful move i think a player like Mikhail Tal would do that for sure and would beat the hell out of this out of his opponent with this tactical shot so as i said so many so many dirty ideas already so let's see now another example again we have uh this d takes c4 idea we have bishop to g5 uh, bishop to g5 bishop to b4 e4 so again the same setup and again after move knight to d4 here uh again black is delaying a little bit the situation with uh uh with casting plays queen to uh queen to c7 is not playing the most aggressive lines uh bishop to c3 as we said uh, was the main idea now we're playing simply queen to b3 here from white's perspective and now black is trying really really a dirty trap but it, it actually becomes his main problem here black is trying now bishop to c3 getting rid of the key defender e4 we have seen in some occasions that this idea could work but not in this scenario because you should simply take bishop to c3 and now with bishop to b5 uh, there is now a serious serious threat and we have even if you cover with knight to c6 still we have a great grip around the square so it's already a weird position here for for black black is hoping for to get something out of this knight to e four ideas and that's exactly this beautiful beautiful trap of, of this line knight to e4 is not working because of a beautiful counterattack knight to b5 the problem is now you take this comes with check even if you take we still can take of course the rook and the knight is hanging i think even if you try bishop to d5 we take he takes d5 bishop to f4 still we can get our knight back even if you play something like knight to a6 maybe rook to c1 could happen still i think 
we can always get our knight back into the game and we will continue the game with upper hole rook so in this game as i said i've removed bishop to c3 uh here queen to c3 knight to e4 now knight to b5 you hear queen to c5 was played and it was a game played by yuri averbach against jakob estrin here yuri averbach played really really beautiful aggressive chess you see now the beauty of this trap is that actually black is thinking that he could beat you around the square f2 and that's exactly not the point that's uh, um, not even possible because you will actually lose here from black's perspective the game around the square g7 that is really really beautiful beautiful after queen to g7 okay rook to f8 was played now bishop to h6 continuing the pressure against this uh, rook because we want to we want simply the queen to get deflected from the defense of the rook here exactly black tried this with queen to f2 and okay you had one check you had your fun but now the game is over with queen king to d1 no checks are possible look at this beautiful um coordination of white pieces not allowing here the checkmate on d2 uh now in the near future we can play i think even some ideas of rook to f1 uh we can also play knight to c7 bishop to b5 so so many again beautiful attacking ideas rook on f8 is hanging here because of the battery here in the continuation black right knight to d7 now rook to e1 attacking the knight the knight retreated to f6 and it seems so that maybe black has defended this black has still two rooks has three minor pieces on the board but actually this is not working anymore because bishop to e6 here played by yuri Averbach, a really really great tactic and you see now how actually black fell for this he was greedy uh, for the e4 pawn got punished uh here in the continuation if you try f takes e6 then of course rook to e6 after king to um, d8 we have queen to e7 would be of course a checkmate the knight is controlling the square c7 so see how beautiful this game can be after move um, bishop to e6 we had now queen to b2 but now with rook to c1 in this position uh black resigned there is always this uh discovered attack if even if we take out the knight bishop to c4 is going to happen so the game is over really really beautiful tactics as i said uh you should not be greedy let's go back here bishop to c3 queen to c3 it seems so black is winning but actually it's not we have a counter attack takes takes Queen to f2, not a problem. Don't get scared. Uh, Black king is also endangered. But again, I'm pointing out, look at this lack of development. Bishop on c8, knight on b8, rook on a8. So too many, too many positional problems. So let's see another example. It's a little bit different now. We have now this a6 idea. I've removed bishop to g5. And this game becomes really, really wild. It's um, so thick. It's uh, so dirty. Uh, the idea is that you can get out of this... Um, a6 is of course the main goal as we said in the beginning of the video to fix the pawn structure or at least if black uh, gets challenged with move bishop to c4 then b5 comes with the tempo against the bishop and then of course b4 would come also with the tempo we have said in the beginning the minor pieces on c4 and c3 becoming more and more of an object of black's uh, pawn storm on the queen side so after move a6 um, uh, we have now again this idea e4 b5 finally black cements the position on the queen side but actually gets challenge with the move e5 and this is still good for black black is not losing the game because black, black played the game like this uh, it's simply a wild line of of this variation after move e5 of course you have to counter attack with the move h6 bishop to h4 and um, i'm pointing out all of these lines that i'm showing a little bit too fast today we will cover in a deeper way in our vienna variation uh, series so the, as i said i'm sorry if i'm moving this uh, uh, moves now a little bit too fast today but as i said in the near future we'll analyze for instance this position more and more for white for black uh what should you do what should you not do i wanted to show you now really the, uh, the common dirty traps that can happen now of course uh black has to play the move g5 now comes this idea knight to g5 h takes g5 bishop to g5 and now after move bishop to e7 white is playing now the game in a really really beautiful tactical way after bishop to e uh, f6 we have bishop to f6 and okay here if white takes uh e takes f6 this is probably not good in one particular moment this pawn will be probably taken queen to f6 and i think uh, black can rely on this position so that's why white needs now to play the move queen to f3 and now comes the actual trap but uh, actually you don't know who is trapping who here because the after move queen to f3 
counterattack against the rook on a8 and also against the bishop on f6 the game becomes really wild because white uh, get challenged with this beautiful idea with the move queen to d4 is allowing now uh, you to take the rook the problem about this move um, queen to d4 is if you take the rook you will get smashed i think this is a good position finally for black because you have this problem you get first of all this move queen to e5 the check and there's not a good way to cover yourself anymore of course knight to e2 is leading into uh queen uh, bishop takes b uh, queen takes b2 ideas so it's also not good the problem is now if you play something like king to d2 if you're trying maybe to move your king towards uh the center then you get b4 and then again the spawn is hanging uh your king cannot cast anymore and similar stuff so the only way to prolong the game is to play bishop to e2 but notice also that kingside casting is never really an opportunity because you get checkmated on h2 so you cannot secure anymore the king by casting and that's the actual problem of this opening so here uh, the problem is now after uh, this move c6 that um, black is playing black is playing first of all a protection of uh the knight on or of the knight on b8 and what is black what black is trying to do now is to play uh, queen to c7 then bishop to d4 and then also bishop to b7 trap your queen so that's now the most important uh, thing to notice here so you could maybe try some ideas rook to c1 but you see now uh queen to c1 you may maybe play maybe bad move let's see a4 and now for bishop to d4 you can get smashed the actual goal is um, um so let's see add bishop to d4 and then bishop to b7 uh is probably uh trapping the queen so as i said this is now uh really something that bothers now black uh, uh part of the white in the continuation of the game so that's why after move c5 i think white needs to get out of this match with some ideas of queen to a7 but actually you see now the main goal of blacks is here a potential knight to c6 and then knight to d4 and this would cause i think again too many too many positional problems um uh, here for for white knight to d4 in my opinion simply winning the game so there's really uh, not a good way anymore to protect the position you have to play again queen to a8 now queen to c7 knight to d4 so again you cannot castle if you castle on this side uh it's simply too much of a pawn storm here on the queens and so as i said the position is simply not good anymore for white uh because white took the rook but actually in this game after move queen to f3 the cool part was that after move queen to d4 actually it was black that was trapped because now white simply took the pawn on f uh the bishop on f6 now the rook was hanging and black was hoping for to get something out of this attack on um, on the h file maybe uh, to include the rook on e5 white simply castled on e2 we had the rook to e5 and now uh for queen to h8 in this position actually black resigned it was the game played by pavel Lyanov against maxim uh sorokin here in this position sorokin resigned why because uh, even if you get on the d file if you protect your bishop then you get rook to d1 so you're getting the uh, the king on the file where already the queen is if you don't do that of course uh if you go on e7 then you lose the bishop on on c8 so uh, as i said the um, after move uh, queen to f3 what black really needs to do now is to play rook to a7 and then uh, play something like bishop to b7 and this game should probably lead into drawish more drawish and more uh, solid lines for both sides that's the way to proceed here not to play sort of a trap that actually could cause you a counter trap with queen to f6 uh, now uh, the rook is saying and with rook to d1 also there are some tactical ideas around the square d so really really uh brutal brutal you see this um, vienna variation ideas can be for white for black so really really great stuff so let's see now another example um here we have again the queen's game decline for again this ideas we have could have now of course a move like e5 we have c takes d4 and now what you could face here from black perspective is this method uh with the move queen to a4 so this is now really the most brutal of all lines this is really perfect chess what you can see but most of the times although it seems in the beginning that this uh, game is uh, really really wild it most of the times the game ends in a draw if you know what you're doing so now 
you see what white is trying to do here queen to a4 uh is of course attack against the bishop also so you have to play uh first of all the move knight to c6 but now with the move queen side castling you cannot take of course the knight because your queen is hanging so you have to make something out of it so that's why many times black is playing now the move bishop to d7 and now comes really the funny part of this opening now knight to e4 is played and actually white is getting all of this all of this tactical mess and is threatening now to take out the knight on f6 but actually what black is doing is now sacrificing the knight this is really a sharp line that we will analyze more and more and uh, this line i'm showing you because it's so so dirty and actually black is allowing now white should take another problem he takes f6 but after g takes f6 now uh, after bishop to h4 black is preparing now really brutal brutal pawns or with the move a6 and the problem is now you cannot take with the bishop bishop to c4 is not possible probably you get b5 so that's why you have to take with the queen queen to c4 and uh, the problem is now this next move e5 e5 is creating now more solid pawn structure in the center and what black is hoping for is of course also to play now the move f5 then e4 then maybe d3 rook to c8 is a possibility getting the rook where the queen and the uh, the king already so black still had so many so many brutal tactical chances here but now after move e5 there is only one good way here for white to make uh, something out of this position white needs now uh, to make a huge decision white needs now to make this move and maybe you can pause the video and try to see now actually the best uh, continuation here for white it's really hard to see every other move i think is not good anymore for white so that's why i think it's must know theory and uh, as i said also in the continuation of the series we will analyze more and more of uh, this opening especially with this position this will be our cornerstone position because many games were played in this particular way as i said many of them are draws if you know what you're doing if you don't know what you're doing you get get smashed here for both sides so after move um here e5 you have to play here from white's perspective a move knight to e5 the problem now for black this is now the beautiful trap uh is that you cannot take with the pawn you would love to take with the pawn because you would love of course to have such a beautiful central position with the pawns you would love to play then afterwards something like f5 you would have you would love to have of course the centralized pawns but actually here knight to d6 is simply winning the game it's a check you cannot take with the bishop you lose the queen if you move the king you get checkmate on f7 this is the beautiful trap of um, this line so you have to take with the knight and actually as i said every other move here for white is simply too passive here in this particular um, game that i found uh, here white tried to escape from the c file attack and uh, got smashed with the move bishop to e6 we have queen to e2 you see knight to b4 uh, every move every new move by black is simply a beautiful attacking move although uh, still white is up a whole uh, whole piece but look at the activity of black pieces all of these bishops are in aiming towards the king the, towards the queen side towards the king the queen will be included into the game here a3 was played and now with queen to uh, d5 in this position uh, white resigned so as i said um in this position you have to make a huge huge decision um knight to e5 is a must move because you can expect the next move to be bishop to e6 for sure rook to c8 we have seen too much of a pressure after knight to e5 we have seen if <laughs> takes e5 really wild stuff knight to d6 is losing the game you have to take with the knight and now the game leads into a more solid uh, position queen to d4 but still you see it's wild the pawn structure is messed up the bishop is a little bit loose f4 could happen uh the d file it's really an object so we will use uh this position in the as a cornerstone of our future analysis of this particular lines but uh don't make the mistake uh, like many players did after move knight to e5 f takes e5 is not a possibility so let's see now another example we have again uh the queen's game declined the uh, vienna variation e4 bishop to b4 bishop to c4 knight to e4 that's the line that i play now very very often i like this line i like uh, to be active with my pieces i sacrifice now many times the pawn in the center simply kingside castling knight to c3 after b takes c3 we will analyze also 
bishop to c3 don't worry about that it's really a wild line also uh that you can play but many games are simply leading into uh, bad positions for black so many times black is uh, uh playing bishop to e7 so just for the for the purpose of this video i'm not going to analyze now all of this theory and now comes a move that you have to also play knight to e5 you want to include your queen into the game because we can notice that with the move knight to e4 knight to c3 black gave up a very powerful defensive piece in front of uh, in front of his king so that's why many times white is now using simply all of these minor pieces uh, as great at, uh, attacking pieces including the queen on g4 and then rook to d1 rook to d3 rook to h3 rook to g3 so getting the rook somewhere on the third rank uh, is also a beautiful idea so now you use simply the activity and i think you should be really familiar with the potential move order that you have to use uh, in these types of ideas so after move knight to e5 black castles you play queen to g4 knight to d7 challenging your knight is perfectly fine here for black but now with bishop to h6 uh you have to create this idea because you want to have first of all the rook connection now you have to play rook to d1 because when you retreat with the bishop you want to retreat maybe with the bishop on c1 but still you're keeping your rook connection i've talked about these ideas in one of my uh, basics in chess series videos and also in one of my uh, how to become a master in chess videos uh, you have to play this particular mover just memorize it you see the rook connection you still have there after king to h8 uh, you still can retreat with the bishop to f4 you can also retreat to c1 maybe then afterwards to a3 so still you have a great flexibility so here in one game that i really found uh, and it's really a cool game bishop to f4 was played now g6 this is now already becoming very very bad for uh, for black because black we can simply the pawn structures too much i think black needs even to simplify the game with the move 95 or maybe even to break somehow or getting out of the uh out of the default attack but here uh, with the move g6 you weaken simply too much your pawn structure and that's exactly a moment that i think uh, you have to use now and i think you will reach this position many many times because i've reached it and that's why i think still that it's a beautiful beautiful um tactical trap that you have to be familiar with because you play simply h4 you continue the pressure uh it's i think a great method and uh, for instance if your opponent plays now simply bishop to h4 we can play bishop to h6 attacking the rook and the rook is lost you cannot cover yourself anymore if you go to uh g8 uh, it's of course checkmate if you go to e8 then knight to f7 is a fork against uh the queen and the king so that's why you have to be careful here also for black black try here bishop to g7 h5 we had knight to f6 and now queen to h4 which was now again a beautiful beautiful trap because here if you play g takes h5 then the pawn structure is simply too weakened bishop to g5 could happen and you could face many many problems but here uh, uh, after move knight to h5 in this position white played really beautiful move knight to f7 if the rook takes of course then queen to d8 is checkmate uh pardon me is taking out the queen is simply too much uh too much of lost material it's game over for black so after move knight to f7 in this position black resigns so this will be as i said also a line uh that uh, will analyze uh, of the vienna variation very very popular very often played with many traps with many strategic ideas but again i think if black and white are knowing what they're doing then probably the game should end in a draw because black has also some ideas how to liberate himself in this position but i really like this line because i get a huge activity and of course as i said i'll, I'll show you uh, very very important ideas of this opening so let's see now another example and this will be now our last example and i think it shows really again how dirty how dirty this opening can be and it's such a such a beautiful example uh here it's a game played by casa corley against alexander uh shimanov here again this ideas we play e4 uh, we have now b5 b5 you find many many times this move um in the vienna variation of the queen's game the claim for instance jan nipomnia she's playing this opening very very cool uh and also young krishnov duda is a master of this opening so you 
could get surprised with the, with the power of this particular line because what black is doing here is allowing now after move e5 uh white to take now uh, the pawn on b5 which seems like a strange idea why would black do such a thing and also the pawn on c4 saying but actually with the move knight to b6 uh, the c4 is protected and what black is provoked here in the position is now first of all a weakness uh, which is now the backward pawn on d4 and this becomes now a crucial strategical disadvantage here for white don't get also surprised if your opponent plays something like bishop to uh, bishop to b7 and maybe something like uh, i don't know knight to c6 queen to d7 if black even castles queenside many times you'll see even queenside castling in uh, this types of line so as i said this uh, line will be also in our uh, Vienna variation Queen's Game Decline series. But here I wanted to show a really, really dirty trap. After move Bishop to e2, Knight to c6, Kingside Calcing, and now uh, here we'll, after Bishop to e7, Queen to d2. I like to play also this line many, many times uh, against the Black's Vienna variation because I want to actually. You could try bishop to e3, bishop to f4, but actually I want to get here also many times with my queen now. Then I want to play queen to f4, and then rook to d1, then bishop to e3, and then I would have really a solid position. But don't get surprised if you get smashed, because what you should notice here is the knight is a little bit loose on the board on b5. It's perfectly fine, it's an active knight, but it is not supported. And you will probably lose another tempo just to retreat with your knight again back. So that's why you should be familiar with this tactic because after bishop to b7 queen to f4 queen to d7 and now comes the critical moment bishop to e3 and now comes the actual trap the coolest part about this uh move uh, bishop to e3 is that actually it's a mistake because now black can play a beautiful bishop uh pardon me g5 the problem now after move g5 is after move knight to g5 we have bishop to g5 we have queen to g5 and here after move knight to uh, e7 you see the knight is hanging this is already game over. Whatever you do, for instance, if you retreat uh, here with knight to c3, you get rook to g8, and you see now how beautiful uh, this bishop and rook are working. So it's a position that you have to resign. So you could maybe try to prolong the game with uh, something like queen to h5, but as I said, your knight is saying here in this position, knight to c7 was played in the continuation. We had queen to c7, we had f3, rook to g8 anyway, queen to h5, and after knight to f5 in this position, uh, white resigned. So you see how dirty really this openings can be. Um, I'm sure that uh, you maybe solve uh, many of these things, but as I said, this will be our cornerstone sort of base that we'll try to analyze now in the continuation of our Vienna, uh, Vienna variation series. I think it's really something worth to study because black has chances, white has chances. Uh, we'll reach now many, many positions uh, that are very famous and they're, they're very popular. And I think we'll have many, uh, many funny positions because this is simply beautiful beautiful chess opening and really beautiful variation of the queen's game decline so okay i hope that you enjoyed the uh, this uh, study this were really really great examples in my opinion if you want to see more about the queen's game decline with some other defenses and uh, some other uh, sidelines of particular openings check out my queen's game decline series here's the link of our series and uh, if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel See you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course.